David La Pena, and we are the group one. And my report for today is about business organization and management. So our first topic is about development of our business culture. Well, when we say development in our business culture, is like when, when, where is the first, uh, first known this business or business process thing in uh, before it 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 known in the whole wide world. So business de de business development culture is people have engaged in a business activities since the earliest beginning if if community existence business is already highly developed in the ancient world recent excavations have entered business transactions when when you say business is is developed in the early beginning and before before our before our stage it, business is also very known uh, very known in Asian times because especially in China uh, China is like more known in business or trading like for example the barter exchange for good and next it um, Business functions like insurance and banking date back to the Middle Age. Philippine pro products were an insignificant position of this trade. Most of the profits were eminently claimed by the Chinese other Asian traders. Yes, as, as what I have say, uh, Chinese is the number one thing in business and Philippines is also uh, trying their best to, uh, to transact with the Chinese people and Yes, uh, many Chinese people here in the Philippines are making it business. Uh, uh, what's this? Uh, making a profit here or making a business here in the Philippines. So next is the study of business. Well, the study of business is the modern business culture had its beginning in the commercial revolution of the 15th century and 16th century. The geographic discoveries, the influx of luxuries such as species, and perfumes and spices sell perfume and other items from east to realization by the yeah that are material things in life worth buying and enjoying give rise to an unpredictable increase in trade income from uh, common new and demands for goods development well modern business is like we have in uh, modern business has beginning a commercial revolution of 15 to 16th century well, we have trade in silk, perfumes, and other uh, like spice, spices, especially in uh, Spanish. Or I think uh, we we have trade in uh, spices, and also uh, also development had to be satisfied business uh, bad to wait for the influence of the commercial and revolution of industrial revolution and the laziness. Well, the study of business is about. Trading is obvious about trading uh, goods or trading your products in the different country, and like especially uh, Philippines is it's like uh, giving uh, Philippines is it's uh, like want to trans transact different countries, so they uh, so the Philippines will also have a different business culture. Next is the attributes of the three term business well business had been defined as an organization of the people with varied skills which use property or talent to produce goods or service service well when you say business businessman or woman they are very uh, highly with this thinking and process because for trading goods they have to know where where they trade or where they conduct their products to be to, to give their customers a satisfied or so the customers will agree to to their uh, product and give a uh, give sale to the to the, to the customer because a business is like business women or men are very highly uh, thinking about their risk especially when uh, they have a competitors in every business they have they have a competitor so they must know what what sh they they must know what are their weaknesses and strength especially so they because in business we have competition so yes 
business is also a risk to us as a business woman or uh, business so so last is the kind of business first we have commerce refers to the transact transfer or exchange of goods and service with the movement of goods from current production points of consumption for example we have a uh, for example, the retail business and commerce is represented by a store, or grocery store, department store like Social Santos or COD. For example, it's like our Sarasari store in the Philippines. Sarasari store is a very known in the Philippines and like a mini grocery or mini shop that you can buy anything that you want. And next is under commerce, we also include of a bus host of activities that have ground grown around the actual transfer of good so an industry is primarily concerned with a certain form utility or the production of goods that are used either by consumer and last but not the least is service service are the third word broad classification of business this interpret carry to personal needs of people with rendering of personal service well we can say service is like like a traitor uh, for example a cinema or a barber shop, of course, uh, they give service to the people that wants to want haircut, and also hotel or lodging. They give service also to the guests. So that's all for my topic about uh, business and organization management. And I hope that you understand. Thank you. Let's go on. Why do people go into business? The choice of the particular business location factors and social values, and TQM evolution. Why do people go into business? There is more to gain in starting up your own business. I present to you the following reason. Number one, to increase your income. This is obviously the main reason why most people get into the form of business or the other. If you set up a viable business, you are likely to move from a 6-digit monthly income to even an 8-digit income in the less than no time. Second, to have an additional job. It is very difficult to handle two jobs at the same time, but having a formal job and doing a business is not too difficult. In fact, today many people do both. They set up a business employ one or two persons to work from them, and then still carry on with their formal jobs. Third, to be your own boss. When you set up your own business, you have no one to answer to but you. You can make decisions freely and choose what to do at every point in time without anyone asking you questions. You are the boss, and everyone respects you for that. Fourth, to get freedom. Man naturally loves some degree of freedom because you don't have change on your hands. Doesn't mean you are free as long as you have to strive daily to be at work in order to secure an income. You are not free. Even if you are heading in an organization you work for, you are not free as long as you can only earn an income if you go to work. Fifth, to gain job security. Before now, most people thought that in order to secure a wonderful future, you all to study, get a good degree, pick up a lucrative job, and earn a huge package. Now, with the high rate of job insecurity, getting a job has come the most insecure way to earn an income. This is worse than even a private sector. 6. To enjoy life by doing what you love. Starting up your own business offers you the rare opportunity to do what you love and create your own unique impression in the world. When you do what you love, you earn money for doing nothing. Writing is something I do to do. I am very relaxed when I write. If I build a business, this is center of writing and publishing life is more likely to be fun for me. To meet a need in a market. The only way to meet a clear need in a market is to step out the comfort zone of a job and go through the odds just to fill an existing gap. You can only do this by starting up your own business. 8. To develop your own creative skills. 
Most jobs are built around some form of routine and only help to kill the creativity in most people. This is why a true entrepreneur is hardly able to keep a job. The choice of particular business. Liability of owners. The first crucial factor to be kept in view by an entrepreneur while choosing a form of organization is liability of the owner in meeting the business obligations. Generally, an entrepreneur would prefer a form of organization in which the owner's liability is limited only to the capital invested by him in the business. He would not like his personal assets to be utilized under any circumstances to settle the business obligations. Second, life of organization. Each of a firm plays crucial role in its growth and success. This is why entrepreneurs prefer a form of enterprise whose life is not linked to the lives of its members so that existence of organization remains unaffected. Third, transferability of ownership. Another variable influencing choice of the form of organization is freedom of the owner to transfer his ownership in the company to someone else as and when desired. This will facilitate the firm to raise funds from the market. Fourth will be flexibility. Entrepreneurs would like to choose a form of organization which offers the maximum degree of flexibility and making resource to a variety of source of funds from the market. Fifth, tax liability. Tax on earnings is an important cost to an enterprise. An entrepreneur chooses a form of organization which involves lowest tax liability. 6. Legal formalities. Certain procedures have to be followed and formalities need to be complied with for establishing an enterprise. These formalities, as per legal provisions, differ depending on the type of organization to be set up. Obviously, entrepreneurs would like to select that form of organization which enables them to start business with minimum legal formalities and costs. 7. Geographical mobility. Another important consideration influencing an entrepreneur's choice of business organization is geographical mobility. Usually, an entrepreneur likes to select a form of organization that provides freedom and right to conduct business in different regions of the country without much legal compl complications. 8. Scope of Expansion Entrepreneurs would like that form of organization which provides ample scope of ex for expansion and diversification of business to exploit emerging market opportunities. And number 9. Government control. Entrepreneurs are loath to choose a form of organizations to conduct their business where there always remain a great possibility for governmental interference and control. The last but not the least factor that influences the decision of an entrepreneur is the extent of control which he command over the operations of the business. Generally, Entrepreneurs prefer such form of organization as enables them to command exclusive control over the business and thereafter delegate it in an orderly manner. Location factors and social values. It has four social factors. You have culture, subculture, social class, referent groups. Culture were a person culture is represented by a large group of people with similar heritage. Culture exerts a strong influence on a person's needs. And once it was through cultures that we learn how to live, what the value, and how to conduct ourselves in society. Social factors. Culture. Where a person's culture is represented by a large group of people with similar heritage, Culture exerts a strong influence on a person's needs, and once it is true culture that we learn how to live, what to value, and how to conduct ourselves in society. Subculture, an cohesive group that insists within a larger culture develop around communities and that share common values, beliefs, and experiences. In social class, some manifestation of virtually every society is determined by a combination of factors including family, background, wealth, 
and prestige. Like culture, it affects consumer behavior by shaping individuals' perception of their needs and wants. Reference Group Consumers' behavior can be influenced by groups a person comes into contact with through friendship, face-to-face -face interaction, and even indirect contact. Let's go on to Total Quality Management consists of organization-wide efforts to install and make permanent climate where employees continuously improve their ability to provide on-demand products and services that customers will find of particular value. The concept of quality has existed for many years, though its meaning has changed and evolved over time. In early 20th century, quality management meant inspecting products to ensure that they met specifications. My name is Mary Jane and I'm here to discuss about quality. quality. Definition of quality. Duran is one of the quality gurus define quality as fitness for use. Quality of a product or service in simple terms is its suitability for use by the customer. Quality has to be perceived by the customer. Perception of the supplier is also important, but the customer experience of quality of a product or service is more important. Why? Because once the customer is satisfied with their, of your products or services that you have offered to them, then they will keep coming back to your, to your company. If they will keep coming back, then it's really a great success of the business. Quality does not mean an expensive product. On the contrary, it is fitness for use of the customer. It means that it doesn't mean that if it's if it's cheap or expensive product, as long as it's useful for the customer, then that's good. International Organization for Standardization or ISO, the world body for standard formulation was founded in the year 1946 and has its headquarters in Geneva, Switzerland. ISO is known all over the world because of its path breaking standard ISO 9000 released for the first time in the year 1987. The definition quality as per the ISO 9000 standard is the totality of features and characteristics of a product or service that bear its ability to satisfy a given or implied need. Thus, the standard definition of quality is common both to products and services. It is essentially satisfying the customer needs, both stated and unstated or implied. The latter is more dominant in service. When there is a contract for supply of a product or service, the needs will be specified term. Chain Reaction Deeming noted this chain reaction was in the blackboard of every board meeting in Japan from July 1950 onwards. The Japanese success is a best-case study for TQM. Understanding the chain reaction transformed them from a shattered economy to a successful nation challenging the USA after World War III. Since we all know that, Japanese, that Japan is a successful country, this is a chain reaction. Japanese chain reaction. First is improve quality. You need to improve your quality. Quality of the product or services, you need to improve that. Second is cost decrease due, due to fewer defects, lesser rework, fewer days, and better use of men, machine, and materials. Third is improve productivity. Capture a market with better quality and lower prices. Stay in business and lastly provide more jobs. Dimensions of quality. Since dimensions of quality has two features, we will start from product quality. The first of the product quality is functionality. Functionality refers to the core features and the characteristics, characteristics of a product. The definition of functionality is per ISO or IEC 9126-1981. A set of attributes that bear on the existence of a, of a set of functions and their specified properties. The functions are those that satisfy stater, stated or implied needs. Second is reliability. Reliability is a measured by mean average, average time between failures or the MTBF. Reliability is an indicator of durability of products. For instance, the MTBF of a car can be specified as 1,000 hours of running or 10,000 kilometers. 
Reliability is how re reliable is your product is. Third is the usability. A product should be easily usable. The customers should be able to use the product easily with the help of expert because if the product is not usable, then the customer should invest. The customer will will in, will invest another time and money. Then it will really take take their time. That's why you need to be very careful in making a product. That's why you will really think carefully that it is usable usable for the customers. Fourth is mean that maintainability. Maintainability refers to the ease with which a product can be maintained in the original condition. Products may become defectible in use or in transit. It should be repairable so as to retain the original quality of the product at the lowest cost at the earliest possible time. This applies to software, automobiles, household items such as refrigerator, air conditioners, personal computer, etc. Five is the efficiency. Is the efficiency is the ratio of output to input. Example, if a car gives a mileage of 20 kms per liter of gasoline and another car with identical features gives 150 kms per liter, then the former is more efficient than the latter. It means that how efficient is your product from starting point from the output to input. Sixth is the portability. Portability is defined as a set of attributes that bear on the ability of software to be transferred from one environment to another. The environment may be organizational, hardware, hardware, or software environment. Portability means that a certain product will be a transferable from one environment to another. So we are done with product quality. We'll be moving to service quality. First, the service quality is quality of customer service. Quality of customer service is important in every business. In the service industry, meeting customer and finding out their employment requirements is more challenging. Why? Because customers have different perspectives and different needs and wants. That's why it's very challenging for, for them. Therefore, the ability to satisfy customer depends on the quality of customer service. Why does customer service is important in every business? For the, it is important for the reason that customer service Customer is a key for the success of the business. A, su a satisfied customer can help to boost the success of your business. Second is the quality of service design. Sir since service, service are usually made to order, it is important that the service is designed as fair as the requirements of the specific customers. For instance, a software product developed for a specific bank takes into account the unique requirements of the bank. Third is the quality of delivery. It is important in any sector, but more crucial in case of services. The facts and delivery should be easier to satisfy, to satisfy the customer. Since, since, it's a, since we all know that who, who would want to have a defects on your product? No one. So that's why in terms of delivering, you need to consider, you need to be more Careful in delivering the products in order to satisfy your customer. It will the, since since it's a, since we all know that who who would want to have a defects on your product? No one. So that's why in terms of delivering, you need to consider you need to be more careful in delivering the products in order to satisfy your customer. It will that they will not be disappointed. So here are here are the additional attributes of the that applicable in both in both service and products. First one is the timeliness. Delivery and schedule as per requirements of the customer is a must both in the product sector as well as in service sector. Timeliness is critical for many products and services. Delay in arrival of aircrafts or planes are instances of poor quality of the services encountered in day-to-day -day life. Because customers doesn't like waiting. That's why you need you need to be on time and be specific on your del in terms of delivering. Because once that the customer 
is if you, once that you have a delay in delay in delivering, then the customer will be really disappointed and will not and and will not example if if a customer order a certain product for of you then then you will be late then he or she will be really disappointed and he or she will not order in your product again. That's why it's a big loss in your in your business. That's why you need to consider in in terms of del delivering a product. You need to consider the time. Second is aesthetic. A product or service should not only perform well but also appear attractive. Therefore, aesthetic is an important element of quality. Why is it important? Because because we all know that we I, our eyes see first and before we we will experience a certain product that's why it should appear the product or service should appear attractive to the eyes of the customers third is the regulatory requirements regulatory requirements as stipulated by the local and federal governments should be fulfilled by the product and service for instance, an automobile has to meet Euro 2 standard in respect of emission to minimize environmental pollution. Fourth is the requirements of society. The product should fulfill both the stated and implied requirements imposed by society. The customer requirements should not violate society regulatory requirements. Thus, to satisfy a customer, a product cannot be built in such a way as to violate the requirements of a society of a, of a safe, healthy, safe and healthy products. It is important to follow the requirements of society so that you will not vi violate anything for the safety of, of the people or of the product, although you will use the product for safety of the society. Five is the conformance to standards. Product or service should conform to the stated and implied requirements of customers. Where applicable, they should conform to applicable standards such as national standards, international standards, and industry standards. Why is it a product or service should come from the state with conformance to standard? Because if you will follow a certain standard, then it will ensure you that you will make the customer satisfied. At once the customer satisfied, it will increase the success of the business. That's why you need to follow a certain standards. Quality pace. This is the testimony of do you task success quality. Ford, General Motors, and Chrysler were considered to be the to be big three in the automobile sector for decades. Toyota has unseated Ford, Ford Motors as the world's sec second biggest automaker. It is reported that Toyota is steadily marching towards its goal of grabbing 15% of the goal 15% of the global car market sometime in the next day, DK, DK, decade from from about 11% now. This achievement will make Toyota as number one automaker in the world. The market capitalization of Toyota is $120 billion, a measure of how much investors believe a company is worth. This is more than four times that Ford and bigger than the combined stock values of Ford, General Motors, and Chrysler. But profit